Welcome to the U Poker Academy Poker Lecture Series designed to make you a better poker player. In this lecture series we're going to be discussing some hands that happened at the 2013 World Series of Poker. Uh, today was day one of the final table and on the sixth hand we had an interesting play. So here Mark Newhouse has the button um, and David Benefield right here opened with 800,000 chips, which is four times the big blind. It folds around to Mark Newhouse, who's in position. He re-raises to 1.8 million, putting Benefield to a decision for his chips. Uh, Levitt in the big blind tanked for a bit, then re-raised to 4.4 million, putting in the cold four bet. Benefield and Newhouse folded, giving Levitt the pot. So an immediate aggressive move from Levitt early in the game. We expect him to have a great hand here. This is kings or aces, potentially queens to make that play. Um, Benefield opening from middle position likely had a reasonably good hand, maybe your ace-jack, ace-queen, ace-king, or any pocket pair above nines. Newhouse could have been making a move here by re-raising to 1.8 million. He essentially pot commits himself to a call. If Benefield does go all in, Newhouse is going to call. Um, but when Levitt re-raises, the ranges completely change because now you know that Leavitt's not re-raising without an absolute monster and against uh, the range, the maybe 2% range that Leavitt is re-raising, Newhouse is probably 20-30% to 30 to win. So he does go on and fold there rather than getting pot committed against Leavitt. If Again, if it had been Benefield, he could have called there. Uh, the reason that he can't call against Leavitt is because there are so many chips behind. Benefield goes all in the hands over, you play it out, but against Leheva you could easily get stacked there with uh, with a bet and then uh, maybe a raise or a bet on the flop in the turn. So on the next hand Ryan has the button. Uh, it folds around to Mark who raises to 800,000. Uh, Rice folds and Amir folds and Mark uh, calls from the big blind. So this is a four times big blind raise and the flop comp, jack of spades, seven of hearts, ten of spades. Uh, Mark checks, and rather than see bet here, uh, Mark Newhouse checks as well. The turn come, nine of spades, and because Newhouse showed uh, some weakness on the flop, it is a very dry board, Mark opts to lead out. The pot is right now 2.2 million, uh, McLaughlin leads out for 1.2 million, which is about half pot, just a little bit over. Newhouse calls, and the five of diamonds comes on the river. McLaughlin leads out again, this time for 2 million. And Newhouse calls. Uh, the 2 million was just under half pot. Newhouse thought for a little bit about calling, but he does decide to call in the end. Um, McLaughlin shows. 5-5 five, five for a rivered set. So you have to ask what hands Newhouse might have played here. By not leading out the flop, we we can kind of take him off of any pair. Seems like a place where you'd lead out with a jack, a 7, or a 10. Um, but he did call the turn, so he might have had a 9. He definitely didn't have, have an 8 because he would have won. He could have also had something like queen, uh, queen 9, queen 7, where he felt more comfortable checking back and with his overcard potentially catching two pair. Um, if he had something like 6-7, um, he probably would have gone on and bet out on the flop. I'm not sure that checking back with a really weak hand on this flop would be the right play. Um, you'd probably want to bet out with like a pair of sevens here and even a pair of jacks. You might check something like ace-9 where you're not sure you're ahead um, and you've got an out to catch, so if you were to catch your eight, you would have a straight. You might check something like that to avoid being check raised. So I'm going to put Newhouse on a nine here. Uh, we'll know when we see it on TV, but but that's my initial guess. Um, what about the call on the river? Well, if you've checked on the flop and you turn your nine and you call, then that river card seems pretty unassuming. You don't expect him to have a set there. So it, it's probably a good call for Newhouse there if he did have a pair. Um, what about Mark's bet on the turn, though? It's an interesting play with pocket fives. You 
have to ask what you're going to fold out. Is, is he trying to fold out two overcards? Because there's not that many overcards out there. Um, if he had something like Queen King, then he's got a straight on the turn. He's got something like uh, Ace Queen, Ace King. I mean, he he would fold those hands out, but you know, those that's a very small part of his range. Most of the time, Newhouse does have a pair here, and it's better than a pair of fives. So I'm going to go in and say the mistake made in this hand was uh, McLaughlin betting on the turn. I don't see a bet here. Um, this is a place where I check and see what happens on the river. Probably check to him on the river and intend to call a bet. Um, that might be a reasonable way to play it, but I, I really don't like this bet on the turn. So play continues on for about 20 more hands. It's really standard. I looked through the hands. Nothing's really interesting enough to bring up here. Um, pretty standard play all around, but then we get to hand 36, which is our first all-in hand where a player gets stacked. Um, so it folds around to Newhouse, who jams with 5.1 million chips, and Reese uh, calls in the cutoff. The rest of the players fold. Reese shows ace-king, Newhouse shows pocket nines, and Reese catches a king to double up. So that knocks Mark Newhouse out of the game. Just two hands later, uh, JC Tran has the button, and Jay Farber is in the big blind. Action folds around to Tran, who raises to 1.1 million against Benefield and Farber. Uh, Benefield three bets all in for 8.5 million, and Farber goes deep into the tank, thinks for a while. After over 60 seconds, he does call Benefield's all in, and JC Tran folds. Farber has ace king, Benefield has king two. Uh, the flop comes five, ten, queen, and the jack comes in the turn to give ace king the nut straight, and uh, but Benefield does have king two of spades. There are two spades on the board, so he has a redraw. The river does come the two of diamonds, uh, which does not complete Benefield's flush draw, so Farber knocks Benefield out of the tournament. So about a dozen hands play out, uh, mostly raises and folds uh, in the blinds, until this hand. Action folds around the table to Brumelheis, who raises from a small blind to 1.5 million, which is three times the big blind, relatively small raise from the small blind. Um, Reese in the big blind re-raised 3.2 million. Rumble uh moves all in for 15.55 million. The rest of his chip stack and Ryan snap calls with pocket aces. And unfortunately, Michael had two nines and did not improve, and he loses a stack here to be eliminated. So a couple of hands later, the blinds go up again. Um, I've decided to go in and put the blinds on the table right here so you can see them. Now that they're starting to creep up there, people are going to start playing more aggressively to steal the blinds and the anties in the pot. And that's exactly what happens here. So Sylvain starts with the button, and JC Tran, from the cutoff, raises to, sorry, from the hijack, raises to 1.35 million. Uh, Rice calls out of the small blind, and the flop comes. Queen of spades, ten of clubs, Jack of Diamonds, Reese checks, and Tran bets 1.1 million. So the pot is 3.7 million on the turn. Uh, turns a nine of spades, putting four cards to a straight on the board. Ryan checks again. Tran fires a second bullet for 2.35 million, and Ryan calls. So the river's the ace of diamonds. Um, Ryan checks, and Tran checks behind. And what Ryan showed surprised me. He showed pocket tens for the flopped set. So the question is, why did he call this flop instead of check raising it? Well, there's a couple of reasons why he might have decided to do it. He might have thought he could get more value from an aggressive player by having him bet another card on the turn. Personally, with the board as draw as this, um, I would have check raised here. If he did already have the straight, that sucks because you're so deep stacked, but you have eight outs to hit your uh, full house on the turn. So I would probably check raise this as Ryan. Um, he decided not to. I'm not sure whether that was a good play or not, but it definitely shows passive play from Ryan. 
Uh, meanwhile, JC is continuing to be aggressive, and we expected to see a lot of that from him. So, you know, I'm not sure whether or not he, uh, he meant to double barrel into a set. I'm sure that wasn't his intention. Um, he definitely didn't have a straight, but he fired twice anyway, so that's definitely a sign of aggression there. He might have had a queen. Not many queens out there, though, that didn't already have a straight, so like your queen king. Um, and if he had something like queen jack, he probably would have bet more on the turn, but it's, it's really hard to tell what he had here. Um, I expect that queen jack would have also bet on the river. Um, so, you know, he might have had a queen might have had something like a 10 or a jack. Uh, he could have had a 9. Suffice to say, any of those hands, had Ryan check raised, he would have pushed him off. And he would have found out real soon that JC would be able to be bluffed off pots. And he would have built a bigger pot for if JC did have something like queen 9 for a top pair and a straight draw, in which case Tran most likely would have re-raised all in. And he might have won a big stack there. So. I personally don't like the check call, check call line from Ryan here. So that brings us to the end of our first hundred hands. We picked a few interesting hands out and talked about them. Of course, there's been a lot more that you can check out if you read the hand histories. Um, those are my favorites and especially the ones where I thought people were making mistakes. Um, let's reevaluate the table situation at this point. So Tran has taken kind of a beating. He's no longer the chip leader. He's now the uh, fourth chip stack. The six players remaining. Um, everybody who's left in is going to be guaranteed at least a million dollars. Ryan has had a couple of good hands. He has increased his stack to 70 million. Farber has increased his stack as well. Um, and we're getting pretty uh, pretty shallow uh, related to the blinds. Amir has just 6.8 M uh, using Harrington's M. He is yellow zone right now. He needs to be making moves as soon as possible. Six-handed with 6.8M is a very dangerous place to be in. We hope to see him start jamming pretty regularly. Uh, the same with McLaughlin at 8.9M. He's also yellow zone. He's going to be pretty aggressive going forward. Uh, JC Tran and Sylvain at 16.9M and 18.8M respectively are in decent position. They're not quite green zone, but they're at the high end of yellow zone. So they definitely have some room to maneuver. Um, and Jay Farber at 38M and Ryan at 51.7M are green zone. They should be sitting back right now, picking off the smaller stacks as they start to get more aggressive. There's no reason for these two players with reasonably good chip stacks to be making all-in moves or risking a significant part of their chips. So that'll do us for the first episode of the World Series of Poker 2013 Hand Analysis. Uh, please check out our second episode, which is going to cover hands 101 through 200.